here we are. Today's talk is about tools. Um, as, I, as I said at this talk the day before last week's talk, uh, I was thinking that I probably should have done it the second class uh, instead of the last one. Um, but here we are, and I'll make adjustments for the next time I teach this class. Tools, uh, and when I say tools, I mean extraction tools or systematic review tools are tools that, that facilitate the process of systematic reviews. They walk you through the steps, they organize things, they make that include-exclude thing a little simpler than it is in Zotero, um, and they really are just there to facilitate the process. Um, some of them have been very heavily researched, uh, and say, you know, they'll cut down your, your, t your overall time for systematic reviews by like 11% or more. Uh, I didn't read those studies, because um, they looked boring, but maybe it's true, maybe it's not. They certainly do take you through the process, and some, some I'm sure help, some people swear by, uh, some I don't like personally, um, but I've only used one, I've only read, and I've read reviews on others. So tools. There are, there are different tools, I mean there's, there's several options, I'm going to address four of them fairly briefly and then show you one of them. And I'm going to make this go away. Hide timer, okay. Um, Rayan. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced, but that's what it is. Rayan is free. It's produced uh, by a university not in Canada or the US. I can't remember where it was. Um, and it's a free tool. Uh, and it, it helps. Um, I've never used it. Alex has not used it, but she has a colleague who, who used it and she said she was able to adapt to it. Um, but it's not perfect. Um, according to reviews, it seems to have issues with duplicates. So you'd have to remove your duplicates through Zotero and then import them into Rayan. Um, and when you're using the mobile version, it only loads five articles at a time for include-exclude decisions, which is slow when your include-excludes like 7,000 items. Um, I don't know if that... Can... Apparently my niece is eight, eight pounds, four ounces today, if you were curious. Um, Five and a half weeks. Oh, okay. Four. <laughs> She's this big. Um, yeah, sorry about that. I'm gonna mute my computer now. Yeah, so RAN can be used, it does work. I've never used it. Um, I will be checking it out this year so that I can teach it next year. Um, but it's a tool. Samari. Samari is produced through JBI, which is the Joanna Briggs Institute. They are a producer of systematic reviews. Um, that's sort of weighted heavily towards the nursing and, al nursing and allied health fields as opposed to sort of other medical fields. Um, and it's summary or summary or I'm, I'm not entirely sure how they pronounce it. Uh, but it is a tool and it does walk you through all the steps. Um, it is by subscription and typically by subscription for the use of J JBI or for JBI purposes. So if you're writing a, a review for JBI, you use summary to do it. The other thing that uh, Samari has that other tools don't, is when you're writing a JBI systematic review, JBI has like language that it uses consistently across its articles and across its reviews. So if you read three JBI systematic reviews, they will seem like they're plagiarized to a certain degree because to a certain degree they are, but it's like ethical plagiarism. It's what's allowed and it's what's expected uh, within those reviews. They give you the wording for how they, how they want you to do things so that everyone's doing things the same way. I mean, there's only so many ways to describe the same, the same exact steps of process. They say, here's our language, use it and follow it. So Samari has that. Um, and Samari is the one that I've used. I took a course in JBI systematic reviews uh, last August. And it's, it's okay. Um, it certainly walks you through the steps. I like the inclusion exclusion tools. I find it inflexible sometimes. Um, and on occasion, I find that it creates more work than it helps. Um, but it is a tool, and again, it's, it's fairly good. And yeah, parts of it are great. Parts of it I didn't like so much, but that's going to be true of any, any computer tool uh, ever written. And I think, are you guys doing JBI, JBI reviews? But you're using Covidence for them. OK. I'll talk about Covidence, too. Distiller SR is another popular one that comes up a lot. Um, Distiller SR also has a cost to it. 
um, but it does have uh, a student pricing model where, you get, where students get the first four months for free and then any additional month is $15 US or 15 US dollars per month after that. Um, fairly well reviewed, people like it. Uh, and that's, that's all I know about Distiller SR, except that it's popular and people recommend it. The one that you will come up with, come up against over and over and over again, and people that people really, really like and it's really popular is Covidence. Um, I think we've mentioned Covidence several times. I have a systematic review that's happening in Covidence, um, but I'm not actually using them, I'm just kind of looking at it. Um, and yeah, Covidence is sort of the tool that people talk about. It, it's recommended by Cochrane. It's used by lots of people who do, who do reviews. It walks you through all the steps. So importing, it deduplicates things. It does the include exclude criteria. Um, it creates your Prisma diagram, diagram for you. It does all of that stuff for you as you go through the process. Um, and it has a, it has a mobile, mobile application that does the include exclude. So it's kind of like, you know, just press include exclude. It's really quick, um, which is a nice feature. Uh, so you guys are using Covidence. You did it without any tools. Yeah, we just used Covidence. Oh, you did? Yeah. OK. We've had a couple of issues, but nothing. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had a chance to poke around Covidence a little bit, but I've not got much past the uploading stage, which is where I tend to tend to stop being needed. Um, and you're, you've not done, any, done much except searches. OK. So I'm going to briefly show you just screenshots of Covidence and what it looks like. Again, you guys have probably seen, you got, have, are you actually working through it or are you just still just, okay. Anyway, I'll show it and highlight a couple things and then move on. So Covidence, first step, import your stuff. Now, we know that this is not the first step of systematic reviews. First step of systematic reviews is forming a question and then it's you know picking your keywords and finding your synonyms and all of that stuff. Um, that, that I do, that I care about, and that I am an expert in. And then we get to the stuff where I'm like, yeah, not so much, but it exists. You guys can go play with it. Um, so once all of my stuff is done, it gets popped into Covidence. Um, and Covidence has three sections. It has title and abstract screening, full text screening, and extraction. So you import studies into title and abstract, because that's the first screening step. And then from there, you do include exclude buttons. Um, so yes, no, maybe seems to be their categories. And once you've done your yes, no, maybes, it pops your, your yeses and maybes over to full text review. So you can decide. So the maybes are typically the, the groupings that you can't tell from the title or abstract if it's relevant. So you have to go in and read the full text to find those details that give you, give you that yes or no decision. Um, so again, uh, full text review, you get include exclude because you can't have maybe at that point. You have to make a decision. Um, and if you're not sure, you go to your, the other person who's screening and talk to them about, you know, here, here are the issues, um, yes or no. If the article isn't sufficiently dis uh, doesn't sufficiently describe a topic, you can reach out to the author and say, we need to know this detail just to decide if it's good for our review. Um, they may or may not get back to you, but that's where the decision needs to be made. And you need to decide what to do about those maybes if you don't get an answer back. And that's something that you need to report in your systematic review when you write it. Um, this gives you the progress through through Covidence, so like the province, the pro, blah, blah. the progress through the systematic review, which is a really nice feature because if there's two of you, it just tells you where the other person is instead of you going, hey, so how's that review going? Have you looked at it lately? You can just see, um, which is nice. It also tells you whether there's conflict. So if you two, if if the two reviewers disagree on something, it says there's a disagreement here. You need to deal with it. Um, so it just tracks you as you go through, which is really nice. Yeah, this was uh, the screen captures from a video that Covidence uses to oh, okay. teach Covidence. So I, I don't know Francis Piancos, Plankos, um, but that's who was doing it. <laughs> so full text review, include, exclude. 
this is your, your critical appraisal. And this is how it's set up. So you have your article in front of you, which is really nice. And then you have, is this critical appraisal or is this extraction? This is critical appraisal. Um, and it walks you through the steps that it wants you to use. And that's extraction. Um, so data extraction is when you pull the stuff out. That's really what that's really what you're getting to the whole time. It's what I uh, data extraction is the point where you create a summary of the information in each article you've chosen to include, um, and it's based on that summary that you will draw conclusions. Um, and I think I'm, I think I talked about it a bit last week. Um, but basically. You're pulling out the most important stuff, the stuff that you need to have to move forward. Because uh, you can't summarize every article you bring in, but you pull out the important stuff. So how many people, uh, what the population is, what tests they used, or like it's the stuff that, stuff that you need to make your decision. So if you're doing a study that compares two things, you're pulling out what they're comparing. And you're pulling out the numbers. And you're pulling out, uh, in the case of meta-analysis, meta you're pulling out the data. Um, just enough information to move forward and answer your question. Some data extraction is very, very detailed. Uh, some is fairly short. Um, some requires a lot of writing, some does not. You'll find in qualitative systematic reviews, there's a lot of data extracted because they have to talk about, about the conclusions based on text. Like it's, it's a lot of content in qualitative systematic reviews. In a quantitative one, you may have fairly little information just because there's only so much information that's necessary to create a decision in that case. Um, This, so Covenants provides you with an extraction sort of list of things that it thinks you should have in your extraction. You can decide if you want to use all of them or not. Um, you, can add, you can add them in, if, you can add in new ones if you want to. If there's something that's very important to you that's not listed in Covenants, you can add it in. Um, and then you just fill in the blanks. My recommendation when you're doing a data extraction uh, is the same as my recommendation has been throughout this entire workshop series, uh, is Work with another person. Decide how you're going to extract and what you're going to put in your extractions and how much detail you're going to put into your extractions. Make sure you both understand what's going into each section and then go apart and do it. So do, do maintain that level of partnership throughout the whole process so that you know you're getting what, so that everybody on, everybody on the team is on the same page and you're all, you're all contributing academically to the content and, and making sure that yeah, it's just another check and balance, the same thing as every other step in the systematic review has been to this point in time. Okay. So I think that's, that's data extraction. And that's the point where the tool typically stops. Once your data is extracted and you have it available, it's synthesis time, it's time for you to pull it all together and answer your question to take the data you have and the critical appraisal scores and everything you have together and pull it together and write an answer. Or, or tell them, or, or state that you can't make an answer because, because the data wasn't good enough or, or, or you didn't find enough articles or the, there was too much conflict or more study is needed. Like there's all sorts of reasons why you couldn't draw a conclusion. But this is the point where you decide if you can draw a conclusion and if so, what it is, and if not, why you can't draw one. So that, that was super exciting confidence. Uh, from everything I've heard, it's very easy to use. I've certainly, yeah, I pretty much stopped at the upload articles pages. Um, but it looks neat and clean. And if you want to learn anything more about, about this one uh, or the other, or any of the other three that I mentioned, or any others at all, uh, certainly go look them up online. Um, I chose not to come in and show you four videos because that seems super boring. Not that this was super exciting. Um, but yeah, those are extraction tools. They're useful, but not necessary, which is what this slide says is you can DIY it. You totally do not need to spend money on your systematic review. You can do it yourself. Uh, I'm working on a team that is doing it themselves. Um, they use Zotero to collect articles and dedupe them. Um, 
they group them into folders to distinguish uh, folders within Zotero to distinguish include versus exclude versus maybes. Um, they have an Excel spreadsheet that shows what they're going to extract from the data, and they just fill in the each, each of the blocks. Um, I was part of this particular extraction, uh, and we all extracted the same article and compared the results and commented on, you know, I'm not sure, I'm not sure exactly what's intended here. Can you give me some more details on what you want? Um, so we all agreed on how it was going to be extracted. And then you go through and you extract the, I think there were 12 articles in this particular one that we ended up keeping. Um, so that's certainly doable. And, and Excel, Excel spreadsheets are easy. Like we're all, you're typically fairly used to them. They're not, they're not difficult. And this one's not super complicated, um, which is nice. Look at my notes to make sure I'm not missing anything important. Okay. So that's that's extraction tools. Uh, and we're done. All right, thanks for coming to so many of the classes. Um, I do apologize for the last two being fairly short, um, just because I know some of you travel in. Uh, and if you have any feedback for if we offer this again, I'd love to hear it. Uh, I certainly have some, some thoughts of my own on what we want to do next time around. So thank you very much.